And now we have the next presentation on our procedure, which has the theme as uh, Green and Sustainable Metro, the DMRC's approach. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a person who is an IIT Roorkee graduate in civil engineering in uh, 1992, belongs to the Indian Railway Service of Engineers, IRSE, and presently working as Chief Project Manager, DMRC. Currently, he is involved in the planning and execution of phase four uh, works of Delhi Metro. He has expertise in design and construction of rail road bridges with more than 25 years of experience in planning, designing and constructing and of course the maintenance of rail road bridges, track and amplify other railway assets. He has been involved in execution and commissioning of Jammu Udampur Rail uh, Link and Jind Sonipat Rail Line. He has received prestigious national award for outstanding service, Ministry of Railways and Khosla Research Award. He is member of various BIS Railway and IRC B2 and AM, B5 code making committees and also published many papers. I am talking about none other than Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Garg. Chief Project Manager, DMRC Limited. Everybody, please put your hands together as he makes his way. A little louder, please. I cannot hear. Thank you. Thank you. So we have Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Garg. At the onset, I would like to congratulate the organizers for uh, choosing such an apt topic in this time that is Green and Sustainable Metro because sustainability and going green is the need of the hour for the transport sector. Delhi Metro was started on 3rd of May 1995 under the Indian Companies Act. It is a joint venture between uh, central government and Delhi government on a 50-50 equity basis. It is entrusted with the construction and operation of Delhi Metro. A master plan 21 was drawn up for Delhi Metro expansion, which involves 12 lines covering up to 420 kilometer to be completed in fourth phases. Currently, uh, we have completed three phases and the fourth phase is under construction. Delhi Metro started with a vision that commuting experience in Delhi Metro to be com customer's delight. Accordingly, its mission statements were drawn. That is, it should complete the entire Delhi and adjoining area in of the metro network by year 2021. Now, all these things comes to the sustainability of a network. If network is very small, as was discussed in an earlier presentation, then it will not remain sustainable. No traveler would like to travel first by auto, then would go to metro and then again by auto. No, no one would like to prefer that. To serve customers, including differently abled commuters with passion, to sustain the image of being number one in the transportation sector in India, and to be among the top three metro rail systems in Asia with regard to safety, reliability, punctuality, quality, and responsiveness to the customer. If a metro system has to sustain, then it has to ensure the safety and reliability. If a traveler is not assured that he will reach in time by using the network, he would not prefer that system. And to make the Delhi Metro self-sustainable has been the aim of Delhi Metro since beginning. Delhi Metro has a long culture statement. I have picked up only those one which are relevant to the Green Initiative. Delhi Metro culture statement states that during construction, we should neither inconvenience nor endanger public life, nor should our work lead to ecological and environmental degradation. This appears to be a very loaded statement, but we will see how Delhi Metro has lived to this expectation. Our trains and premises shall be spotlessly clean and to cut the waste relentlessly. These are the three culture statements which pertain to a green initiative. Then there are statements which define the sustainability to provide a secure commuting experience, 
to make it easier to do business with DMRC, to sustain leaner the better and be mean business attitude by being effective, responsive, transparent and courteous. All these things add to the sustainability in long run. All structures of DMRC shall be aesthetically planned and well maintained and to ensure optimal and smooth waiting transition at stations. Now to this smooth transition at interchanges with the other mode of transport is very important for any transportation system. If a passenger has used metro from station A to station B and he is not getting last mile connectivity, then he would prefer some other mode. Presently, DMRC has completed phase 1, 2 and 3 and now DMRC is operating 390 kilometer including 29 kilometer of Greater Noida, Noida section and 31 kilometer of Rapid Metro. As you can see, uh, this entire Delhi has been covered by first three phases and now outskirts will also get covered by the phase 4. When we talk about the green concept, then in case of any civil infrastructure project, it is the construction phase which causes maximum damage to the environment, not the operation. Operation phase also causes some damage, but maximum damage is in the construction phase. So if we control that damage in the construction phase, then we can do a uh, great work toward the environmental protection. So what DMRC has done in the direction of environmental protection during construction phase? DMRC has gone now for fully precast technology for entire construction except the PRs which are cast in situ. We have gone for full span precast U girders that has also resulted in a lower rail level and lower platform level. So vertical rise has in, uh, re reduced by 1.5 meter. All these girders are cast in a yard where all the not only quality can, can be controlled but you can protect the environment in a much better way because all the activities are concentrated in a small area. These U-girders are transported on road, so it doesn't add to any further uh, environmental degradation. Then we are using precast T-girders which have been introduced in phase 4. And this has replaced the use of I-girder in earlier phases. Uh, leave about the technology part, but it requires less time to complete the span in comparison to I-girder. Pier caps are also fully precast, so there is very little activity left to the site where a uh, damage to the environment ca can be caused in terms of dust or pollutant like that. These pier caps are also transported to the site where these are to be installed and these are installed using cranes on piers. To reduce the footprint of the station, now we have gone for the single pier station. So only there is a one single pier and entire these pier arms, pier caps, everything is precast. So one station size has now reduced to standard 140 meter into 21 meter. As less area is required for the construction of a station. So we can install the station also on the central verge and only the entries are to be located outside the road area. So it has uh, reduced the land requirement. As you can see, these were the old station on the left side, Kashmiri Gate and RK Ashram. Here the footprint of the station is much more in comparison to the new stations. In Delhi, the stations are under construction, but in Bombay, stations have been commissioned on single pier. The, these are the footprint of Goregaon and RA station, which is much less in width. This is a typical view of station under construction. The biggest advantage is that you can use the road below when the station is being constructed. Like you can see, the traffic is moving below the construction zone safely 
because work is done only during the night. All the erection are done in the night. Once the systems are erected, then you can uh, use the road in the daytime. In the daytime, all type of traffic is moving in the construction area. These are the uh, few pictures of the completed station and uh, you can find uh, that it is not looking as if you have uh, bring all the precast segments and uh, get it assembled on site. These are some other views. These look like regular construction. Another uh, task taken by DMRC is wherever PWD has already planned a road and DMRC has planned their alignment. And once we gone for construction, then it was noted that two agencies have planned their road on the same stretch. Now there was uh, no option left but to integrate the two. So road will be running on a uh, lower deck and metro will be running on the higher deck by which uh, both the road and metro will get at the wheel wash plant. Whenever any truck enters a construction site, it is coming from the road. But when a truck is leaving the construction site onto the road, then there are large chances that it will carry the muck on the tires on the road and it will spoil the road. Further, that road will get converted into dust and will uh, damage the environment. To avoid that, this wheel wash plant has been made mandatory on all the construction sites. So when truck has to pass over this wheel wash plant, it is washed thoroughly from the bottom and its tires so that no dust comes out on the road. This is beaten wash system. Normally, concreting is nowadays being done through uh, batching plants and it is transported in the transit mixer. But it is not possible to accurately measure the quantity of concrete when uh, it is loaded in the transit mixer and there is always some leftover. So that leftover is dumped in this beaten, beaten wash system. Otherwise, uh, the TM uh, driver will dump it somewhere. So that TM is washed, all the material goes in the beaten wash system and it is separated in aggregate and the sand. And that is reused in another work. So by that way, this, uh, this much of environmental damage is avoided. In batching plant, when we put the cement, then always some dust is generated from the cement. So that dust is collected in this dust collector. So that is also avoided by this dust collector system. All the aggregate bins are covered so that there is no dust around that when uh, there is uh, wind. Conveyor belt from the aggregate bin to the batching plant is also covered because it also generates some dust. So all these are dust suppression measures. Whenever there is a heavy machinery working and if there is any slightest complaint of noise from the residents, then we install the noise barrier around that uh, area so that uh, noise is minimized. And it is how we protect the trees in the working zone. It is provided with a uh, area 1.5 meter minimum radius and with good soil and no material is allowed to be put around the tree so that tree is not damaged during the work. And it is a rain harvesting system for very large area. So this is all that can be done uh, in the construction phase. But what can be done during the operation phase for green and sustainable mobility? Use of green energy is one of the area. DMRC is presently using 34% of energy from solar or through uh, renewable energy uh, sources. We are procuring 345 million units of solar energy from Riva. That is an offshore plant for DMRC. And also procuring 2 megawatt of green power from waste to energy plant of Ghazipur. All the metro stations have been provided with rooftop solar energy to harvest the maximum solar energy. So present share of rooftop solar is 3%. Offshore solar is 
30% and waste to energy is uh, around 1% and rest about 66% is grid power. So we have reduced the grid power by uh, one, uh, one third. For sustainability, indigenization is a major step because re reliance on the foreign components is not only cost intensive, but uh, it also has uh, good lead time. Presently, more than 90% of the rolling stock on DMRC network is manufactured in India. With more than 50% local content achieved in rolling stock, signaling, traction and ENM. Local content in civil project is more than 80%. We have developed indigenous driver training simulator, which will be suitable for different type of rolling stock and signaling. Indigenous development of CBT signaling technology, which was purely a domain of uh, foreign operators. Now that dependence uh, will reduce greatly. We have developed IATS, Automatic Train Supervision System, which is a crucial subsystem of the signaling system indigenously. All the rolling stock is of stainless steel to increase the cleanliness and less maintenance. It is equipped with regenerative braking and our present regeneration level is in the order of 40%. So whatever energy train is consuming during acceleration, 40% of it is getting back to the system during braking part. This step uh, I have added because because it adds a lot to the sustainability for the differently abled people. As we know, train has a spring suspension and as the load increases, its, its uh, deck level goes down. So when train is empty, its level is up and as the people enters into it, it goes down. So it creates problem for the wheelchair uh, passengers and passengers who are using walkers or sticks like that. So this intelligent suspension, as you can see, as the people are entering, this video is started when a back-end train reached on the platform, and people are going on entering, and its level is maintained. Because system, suspension system has inflatable devices, which keeps on inflating as the people enter into it. It senses the load on the train and adjusts the uh, level of the train. DMRC started country's first fully automated driverless train operation, unattended train operation, which was flagged off by Honorable Prime Minister on December 28, 2020. So this is the driverless train as it approaches. You can see there is no driver in the train. For fare collection, uh, we have listened about the use of uh, AFC gates, automatic fare collection gates. So these were the old gates where once you tap, this will open and you pass out. So its throughput is less. These gates are normally open. So once you tap, you go, it will not close. But if you try to pass out without tapping your card, then it will close. It will not allow you to pass. So it has increased the throughput because it is not opening and closing. So it is not only saving energy, but it is also increasing the throughput in the same passage. For age of vertical movement within the DMRC uh, station area, high capacity lift and escalators have been provided. For multimodal integration, additional service road have been provided around the station so that people are not entering directly from the main road on the station and creating a position of jam. Because whenever uh, access is provided on the main road, then usually auto rickshaw and uh, these rickshaw all are uh, lined up in the main road and uh, there is congestion on the main road. So to avoid that, uh, service road is provided around the station 
and all the entries through this service road. Now, work of multimodal integration has also been taken up by DMRC at many locations. So, this is the location at Kashmiri Gate. Uh, here I uh, would try to explain, uh, this is the parking, car parking area. And this is two-wheeler parking area. These are drop-off lanes, separate drop-off lanes for car, auto rickshaw, e-rickshaw and taxis. There are four drop-off lanes. It is further integrated with local bus stand and ISBT Kashmiri gate. So all these have been integrated in a single complex at uh, this location. When we talk about parking, then usual complaint is that the human interface in parking is not good. So to improve on that, DMRC has started a smart parking which is a totally cashless parking. So if this video works. The concept is as you pass through toll plaza, it senses your fast tag on the car and it allows you to pass and deducts your charges through the fast tag. So it is the same system. As the vehicle approaches the parking, the AFC sensor senses the uh, fast tag, then boom is opened, car goes inside, one can park the car and take the metro. Once the person is back, he can pick the car and when it will approach the out gate, it will again sense the fast tag, deduct the parking charges based on the duration of the parking and it will go. So there is no human interface. It has improved the efficiency of parking systems a lot. The same system have been implemented for two-wheeler also. Though in two-wheeler there is no fast tag, but we have tried to integrate it with the uh, DMRC smart card. So one will tap his DMRC card and his bike will be mapped with the DMRC card. So he will enter with the DMRC card and exit with the DMRC card. So thank you for giving patient listening. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I would request Sri uh, Sudhanshu Maniji to kindly come up on the stage to felicitate the guest. Can we have you here, sir, to felicitate Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Gar? What a presentation to recall, indeed a very fruitful time, very fruitful knowledge which is being presented by Dr. Sanjeev Kumar Garg. Thank you so much for your precious time. A big hand ladies and gentlemen. Thank you sir.